after stuffing 300 chicken supremes in one hit for a function, I was very glad we had an efficient way to do it without needing toothpicks to hold it all together. The most common way to stuff a chicken breast is to cut a slit in the side, but today I'm going to show you how easy it is to cleanly stuff them using a piping bag. As always on this channel, we'll also plate up a couple of meals using our stuffed chicken supremes to give you some ideas for how you can serve them. Let's get straight into it by cutting the chicken supremes from a whole chicken. This is a very common restaurant cut which includes the breast with the first joint of the wing still attached. If you can't find these to buy, they are pretty easy to cut yourself. Find the keel bone right here in the centre. There's also a piece of cartilage attached to the bottom of it and you basically want to make a cut along either side. Then run your knife out towards the edge as close to the rib cage as you can and work your way around freeing the chicken breast. You'll also need to cut through the skin by the drumstick. Up here by the neck is the wishbone. Mine is broken but I'm cutting around the piece that is here to get rid of it. Then you need to cut through the little wing join and your chicken breast will come away. The other side is the same but mirror imaged. You're still cutting along the rib cage, leaving as little wastage as possible and freeing the breast from the bones. Chicken bones are fairly soft, so quite easy to cut through with a sharp kitchen knife. You'll notice I'm using my boning knife, but you should be able to do this with any smaller sharp knife. Now that we have the chicken breasts off the main carcass, we need to cut off the wing at the first joint to create the classic chicken supreme. You can also remove the tenderloin if you want to. It's like a little flap and would actually just pull off, but you can cut it too. There's still lots of meat left over. You can use the tenderloins for kebabs, the winglets make a great finger food, there's also the thigh and the drumstick, and lastly the carcass can be used to make chicken stock, so everything can be used. I'm going to tidy these up a little and cut off any straggly bits. You might choose to completely remove the skin too. The choice is yours. To stuff a chicken breast, it's commonly slit along here but I'm going to stick my knife in at the thicker top side to create a pocket. This means you don't have a big slit that needs to be toothpicked together to hold it shut while baking. Be careful and go slowly. You want to keep the knife in the centre of the flesh so that it doesn't make any holes. You can cut back and forth a little to create a bigger pocket for more stuffing. The head chef where I worked actually had a special knife for doing this, and he insisted on pocketing all the breasts himself. He didn't trust anyone with this job, because if you pierce the flesh, the stuffing will come right out. In saying that though, go carefully and you'll see how easy it actually is and how much better it looks in the end. Now that the chicken is ready, let's make a simple stuffing. I've got some ricotta cheese, pine nuts and spinach. We need to cook the spinach, so I'm adding boiling water to soften the leaves and let them wilt. It only takes a couple of minutes and it's ready to use. Tip off the hot water and cool it down with some cold water. Mix it through well to avoid any pockets of boiling water. You don't want to burn your hands. Then squeeze out as much water as possible. Sometimes if I have some spinach that's starting to wilt in the fridge and I don't have an immediate use for it, I'll get it to this stage and pop it in the freezer to use later. Chop it up nice and small so that it'll disperse through the ricotta easily. Next we need to toast the pine nuts over a low medium heat. It doesn't take very long so don't turn your back on these. Toasting them releases the natural oils which enhances their flavour, aroma and makes them crunchier. Then add in a good amount of ricotta cheese. Did you know that ricotta isn't technically a cheese? It's made from whey or the watery liquid produced when cow, sheep or goat's cheese is made. Next I'll add some of the pine nuts. I'm going to keep the rest to make a pesto. Don't forget to add the seasoning, otherwise it'll taste a bit bland. You could use cottage cheese, mascarpone or cream cheese here too. 
They're all relatively similar, so use whichever you prefer. To get our stuffing into the pocket in our chicken breast, I'm going to use a piping bag. You can use your fingers, but be careful not to stretch the hole too much. Then simply stick the end of the piping bag into the little slit and squeeze in the stuffing. It's fascinating to watch it expand and fill as far in as you've cut the pocket. If it does split somewhere, try to hold that bit shut and wiggle the piping bag a little. Hopefully it'll fill the other parts of the cavity instead. My preferred method to cook these is to sear them off to give some colour and to crisp up the skin. Then I finish cooking them in a hot oven. They'll take about 30 minutes or so to cook through. Make sure the internal temperature is 75 degrees Celsius or 165 degrees Fahrenheit. While that's cooking, let's talk about the dish we're going to plate today. We've got our spinach stuffed chicken supreme in the oven. To go with it, I've made a creamy mushroom risotto. If you want to see exactly how I make it, there's a link in the description below. Then I thought a tangy beetroot relish might be a nice hint of sweet and sour to get our taste buds going. There's a link below for that too. We'll also make some crunchy fried onions to add texture and a basil pesto for extra flavour. But first, let's get frying these onions. Try to keep the slices even for consistent cooking. Start frying them at a low heat and let them brown slowly as cooking them at too high a temperature will only brown the outsides and leave the insides soft. We want them crunchy all the way through. Once they start browning, remove them from the oil and drain them on a piece of paper towel to remove the excess oil. Keep in mind that they will continue to cook slightly even after being removed from the oil. Next we'll make a basil pesto. Making pesto is super easy. You put everything into a mini blender and blitz it all up. Here I've got the fresh basil and parsley to bulk it out. I've got some pine nuts and some cashew nuts, although any nuts will work. It also needs some fresh garlic and parmesan cheese. Wow, this is looking rather full. So I'll give it a quick blitz and then add the seasonings and oil. Sometimes, especially if you don't have basil growing in abundance, you can substitute half of it for another herb. I've used some parsley because I have heaps of it in my garden at the moment. The basil flavour will still be the overpowering flavour and you'd never know. I want it a little runnier for plating today, but we don't need all of this so I'm going to thin down some of it with a bit more oil. Actually, a little squeeze of lemon will be nice in here too. Perfect. Let's get into plating. Here's our delicious stuffed chicken supreme straight out of the oven. Over here we've got our creamy mushroom risotto. Here's the beetroot relish, our crispy fried onions, basil pesto and some fresh basil for garnishing. Let's use a light coloured plate for the first option today. It will be complementary to the colour of the risotto and chicken. I love how easily risotto can be shaped. I'm using a silicon spoon and look at this beautiful quenelle that can be made almost effortlessly. Then we'll add the chicken supreme leaning up against the risotto to stand it up a little. I'm also going to add a little bundle of the beetroot relish here on the side. I love the pop of colour this brings to the plate. Then I'm going to add the crispy fried onion to give this dish a bit of texture. Now to add some much needed colour, I've got a little sprig of fresh basil and of course our basil pesto, maybe just dotted around the plate. Look how the pesto colour ties in with the fresh basil making the green look so vibrant. These garnishes not only add colour and texture, but also delicious flavour additions to this meal. What do you think of this tasty chicken supreme meal? Let's plate this up a different way and cut through the chicken supreme so the stuffing is visible. Look at the beautiful circle of stuffing. 
I'm going to try and balance these two pieces on top of the risotto to give a bit of extra height to this plate. Risotto is a very forgiving base that you can push into to create stability. I quite like that with the stuffing visible. Let's add our other components. Remember when plating you don't have to completely fill the plate with food. I've kept all the food to the side of this plate with just the pesto sauce out to the other side. I love the way this has turned out. Simple yet elegant. If you're looking for some more dinner plating ideas, check out this video where I give 5 specific plating tips you can use to improve your plating. It features a delicious pork fillet with a ginger infused sweet potato puree. See you over there!